uh, Steve is going to start off the podcast. Okay. And we're going to play a game of um, we're going to play a game of would I lie to you? Steve is going to state a fact or is it? And you have to decide is it true or is it false? Bullshit. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you ready? Yep. Okay. Number one, the unicorn is the national anthem. Not sorry, national animal of Scotland. True or false? False. False. Incorrect. It is true. <clears throat> okay. Number two. In 2006, Tommy Robinson was nominated by his local MP for services to the Muslim community in Luton. True, true. or false? True. What year? 2006. Probably true. So Jared's saying true and Luke is saying true. And what was, this, what was the fact you said, Steve? In 2006, Mr. Tommy Robinson a.k.a. Stephen Yaxley Lennon, was nominated by his local MP for services to the Muslim community in Luton. And you're saying true? True. Was he like the MP or something himself? No, Go it's on. absolute bullshit. It was okay. false. <laughs> Racists. <laughs> Go on. Bill Gates, number three. Bill Gates advocates that the COVID vaccine prevents transmission and infection and has significant investment in pharmaceutical companies. True or false? True. Jared, get off your phone. True. That is true. Correct. That is false. Was it? Probably is false, but yeah, you're right. Say it again. Bill Gates advocates <laughs> for the COVID vaccine prevents yes. transmission. That's, is it false? Is it's it? false. We talk Bill Gates used to. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. Used to advocate and say prevent the transmission and infection. And he used to have significant investment in pharmaceuticals. But Steve wants to correct that. What, Be so what is it now? Because very recently he dumped all his stock. Chad, that was invested in pharmaceutical companies, and now he is completely against that narrative and saying that it completely doesn't work. Bill Gates has dropped, dumped all of his stock in pharmaceuticals after for three years saying that stuff. Yeah, prevents infection, prevents um, prevents uh, transmission. Dumped all his stock, and then several days later came out and said all of what we now know is that he doesn't do all that. Next one, Steve. Okay, number three. Two months ago. In North Korea, a skyscraper catastrophically collapsed after a large fire spread across multiple floors, killing hundreds of people, and the mainstream media had refused to report it anywhere in the world. True. I was going to say true. That is false. <laughs> Go on. Because no steel structure has ever fallen due to the cause of fire oh, see where apart this is leading. from <laughs> see where this is leading apart from <laughs> apart from tower seven <laughs> on 9 11 which apparently fell because of an offish furnishings fire i'll leave you with that <laughs> you misled you then didn't he? number four you went down one path weren't uh, you number four the USA have released a report saying there are UFOs consistently flying around their airspace, which they are investigating and have been f and have been for several years. True or false? True. Go on, Jared. True. That is true. It is correct. Well done. See, you do pay attention. Number five. Now, this is a corker. Canal boat life Ooh. is well known by the police to be the popular... <laughs> Or to be the popular life for paedophiles. <laughs> paedophiles like to live on canal boats. Now, is it true or false? false. <laughs> is it true or false? And if it if it's false, why? What do you mean? Is it false? <laughs> That's if it's false, no, why? No, no, it's true. If it's false, why? Okay, I don't know, right. False. <laughs> so you say false. <laughs> I've never. In all my years living yeah, on Jared, the canal. Why? In all my years living on the canal, I've never met. And pedophile. Okay. How'd you know? How'd okay. you know? How'd you know? I'm going to tell you why. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Luke, what do you think? Um, I'm going to say false because it's a bit of a random okay. statement. I will say that it is true. And it you won't say true. it is true. It is true. John Wedger, a former Scotland Yard detective in like the sort of the child nonsense department, he spotted and they were in, they were investigating people who lived on canal boats in the London borough. Because when they lived on a canal boat, when they were released from prison, 
after being recently convicted, they could manoeuvre through the London borough. How many districts are in London? Like 26, 27? Yeah, okay. there's, there's about 27, 28 boroughs in London. Yeah, I don't think they've all attached the canal already. No, but it's an easy manoeuvre to manoeuvre down the Thames and around London in a canal boat. And when you go through different boroughs, you have 28 days to tell the police that you're in town. So it's, so it's not a fact that it's, it's someone's opinion. No, but it is. No, 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 no. It's Jen, John Wedger. Yeah. The police officer. No, no, no. It was a true fact. That's what they used to do. So yeah, that is a preferred okay. way of living for a nonce. Listen, it served a humorous purpose. Yeah. 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 Hasn't it? It served a humorous purpose. Jared, do you miss the canal that much? Do you miss the children in the canal, Jared? Yeah, do you miss... <laughs> Wasn't there a book called The Canal Children? Skip's, like Skip's yeah. not the very... Railway is, children. Skip's not very child-friendly, is he? I thought you'd have a nicer, <laughs> fluffier dog than that. It's called The Railway Children, not The Canal Children. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> very famous. Do you, uh, J Jared, do you... Uh, I was going to call you JC there. JC? Do, uh, do you miss The Canal Book Life? I do miss The Canal Life. What do you miss about it? Uh, the <laughs> peaceful tranquil of quality. <laughs> Being able to skip borough to borough. <laughs> yeah, Un undetected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I used to think, um, well, I had this little plan. If I ever wanted to go into killing like, like prostitutes or something, what I'd do, I'd go to a town on the boat. Great idea. Get a prostitute. Yeah. Different after, borough. After I was finished with a killer, yeah. then I'd wrap the body up in chicken wire, mm -hmm. yeah, tight, <laughs> on a bit of rope, mm -hmm. haul it underneath the canal boat, right? Why haul it underneath? Hang on, go on. So it's tied underneath the yeah. boat. As the body would inflate, it would like it push through the chicken wire and break up into little bits, little bite-sized bits for the fish. And I'd be able to go unnoticed from town to town mm -hmm. with the dead bodies <laughs> underneath on, the boat. Hang on a minute. How many hauls are you on through a week? One second. Um, if this turns out to be true, <laughs> are we now like? <laughs> There's no we about it. We what it's going to be is we had a friend who's now in jail. <laughs> yeah. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. would you? Why no, would I you think? Thought, about, I just I thought it was a good I idea don't. if you was in that kind of, if that's the kind of thing you got up to, be a it, good way of getting rid it, of the body. I tell you what is what's interesting here. It is a fact though that you do sometimes think about ways you could get away with the things that you shouldn't be allowed to do, even though you've got no intent of doing yeah, that. Yeah. Maybe not that. But specific. as a child, yeah, and, and not that horrific. Specific. And horrific. I just thought it'd be a good way. When you watch the films, you're like, Gotta be careful you're doing it wrong. Your bank know. card is used for everything, isn't it? Mm. You have to have cash. You have to have cash. cash. You can't just go into B&Q, buy lie, buy chicken wire, buy mm. all these little things, and then, you know, you've got to mm. be careful. you got to have cash. Yeah. Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. B&Q famous for taking its Bitcoin. You can pay with Bitcoin and BMQ. BMQ, you can. Yeah, you pay by a debit. You just get. A, you can have a card. Get a card. You can have a card. You can have a literally have a card. A debit. It looks like a debit card. It is a debit card. And when you pay, it takes the money out of your Bitcoin account. Okay. You can do it. There is a little bit of a. It converts it to sterling first and then mm -hmm. in. But um, you pay by Bitcoin. You okay. don't have to hold any fiat. Does anybody here hold any Bitcoin? No. No. Are you interested? No. 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 <laughs> Definitely not. Has anyone tried to pay you in Bitcoin? No. Never. No. I find that quite interesting. Why? Because with the government going everything CBDCs, that is that is Bitcoin. That is that is pretty much Bitcoin. No. No, no, no. Listen, hang on. No on point of that, mate. I'm just... It's a way of control, but Bitcoin is sort of cash. This is how you explained it to me, wasn't it? Imagine having a £100 in your wallet right now. The government doesn't know you got that. Does it? The government has no idea how much cash you got in your pocket. I've got, I've got hundred pound in my pocket. There you go. The wallet, and the government don't know I've got it in my pocket. They have no idea. But if you go to your bank, they know, don't they? Uh, 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 they do. Well, they do. If they, they know. If they wanted to inquire, yeah. Exactly. Straight over. They have no idea what's in your pocket, and that's what Bitcoin is an alternative for. Surely they have no idea because you don't use your own name, do you? When you register, you don't use your name. They just give you a passcode of. No, you do. You do. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. need to give you stuff. Yeah. Of course you do. Yeah, but you don't. You have a code. It's, it's, regu it's regulated. Purchase of it is. Yeah. It is regulated. It's I, thought it was, I thought it was unregulated. No, of course it's regulated. No, it's just, it depends who you buy it through. It's People regulated. have like huge. I've got a friend of. It's uh, not that the. It's not my missus whose yeah, whole company's on Bitcoin. And he's <coughs> legit. I, I see the finance. point you're making. 
<laughs> so Steve, what Steve's so Steve's talking about? I didn't think you'd go down this with this, this rabbit hole. Um, right. So right now, so CBD if CBDC is coming, which they are coming, they're already in some countries. So come to this say country. what CBDC do? Central bank digital currency, right? Okay. right? I, I, Mate, it's kind of like, I mean, in terms of functionality in the way we, we do and say things now, it's electronic money. If you want to boil it down, it's electronic money, which we have now, right? Yeah. How much money did you spend last year? And how much money of that was actual cash that you held in your hand? Probably maybe 5%, 2%, maybe 1% of the money you spent last year, you actually did with hard cash in your hand. You withdrew it, you paid it, right? Uh -huh. um, so CBDCs is basically incorporated technology, which it's aimed at purely digital currency, okay? And it's... Supposedly uh, distributed ledger technology, which is where every every transaction is traceable, every transaction is you go through a system of governance, and it's just basically better than what it is now. Okay, end-to-end uh, -end process is more transparent. End-to-end -end process is more controllable if you want to. Okay, that's fine when you've got cash right available but what's happening is we're moving towards a cashless society that uh -huh. cash will cease to be yeah. so what it means is that if a government wanted to do so in the future when we have cbc if a government wants to do so they will be able to restrict you luke hardy because what is going to happen is we will move to a cbdc you me jared luke, uh, steve won't have a fucking word to say about it we will not happen. All of a sudden, it'll be, oh, we're in pound sterling. Oh, now we're this thing called CBDC. If they become someone who says, oh, okay, uh, we're going to bring in this law, this act that says uh, we're going to be able to restrict you being able to spend money on McDonald's. For yeah, example. or petrol, for example, because it doesn't line up with our green policy, for example, or another thing, uh, we're going to be able to restrict you. A good example would be, we're going to be able to restrict you uh, spending money anywhere that we have flagged as a criminal account uh, or a drug dealer's account or, or a pharmacy because we know, based on your criminal past or whatever, that you've got an addiction and you go and buy fucking whatever. Or you could be at suicide risk. You won't be able to go into a pharmacy and spend X amount of money on specific products. It will be that specific. And then just put a block in the account. Go on, Steve. You, want to say you are using good examples. There. I'm using both. Yeah, I'm using both. Good and bad. Good and bad. So good, and, yeah, yeah, good and bad examples. So good examples there, preventing things for the betterment, for, for reduction of crime or protecting people, right? You take that to the next extreme, um, they are able to exert that control if you get the wrong people in power or, or, or the, yeah, the, uh, a bad government. They can take that control to a level where they can restrict you based on things you said on social media, social credit score. This stuff happens in China now, right? That's CBDC. That's what CBDCs. It's not what's gonna happen if CBDCs come in. It's what could happen. It's like uh, so. Okay. Those could come in. It's all fine though. Yeah. We're like, okay, we trust the government, but in the future, fucking good compare ship. And they literally, what? So what happened in a similar? Th so uh, a comparable situation happened in Canada. We haven't got a CBDC, but when the trucker protests happened in Canada, right? Which is just protest. Mm. You can protest, right? Trucker protests happened. What uh, Trudeau did was because he can't exert that control over personal bank accounts now. It's completely fucking illegal. And it's hard to see what's what because it's all hidden behind banks. And who's got the accounts? There was a load of funding coming in through uh, cryptocurrencies, right? And the good thing about cryptocurrencies is it's completely transparent. So you can go on to, you can go on to, you could go and look at my, one of my like Bitcoin wallets or one of my Ethereum wallets right now. And you could see anyone I've ever transacted with do you look at my wallet anyone i've ever transacted with and anyone they have ever transacted with is literally you can see every single transaction that's ever taken place ever and you can see it and you can see where they all go it's like it's the opposite of hidden it's like the most transparent it's the best way to find fucking criminals right it, who if you can identify one account as a criminal account you know straight away all of the accounts have interacted with it Right? That doesn't mean they're all illegal, but you see my point. What Trudeau, Trudeau did was, in the States, when there was a load of um, uh, donations uh, and Canada currents, donations coming in for the truckers, he basically st stopped... Uh, uh, no, man, I couldn't say. What he did was he shut down access to the bank accounts. And people's bank accounts who were connected to the truckers, they were shut down. And friends and family closely connected to the truckers, they also couldn't access cash. Right? That kind of action becomes easier with CD, CBDCs. Mm -hmm. 
And when you think about you haven't got... So our, our fail-safe at the moment is if, like right now, if you don't trust your money in the bank, you go and take your money out and you've got your cash in your pocket and you can use that. Where can't you spend cash right now? Like you can go and spend cash anywhere, right? Even you can find places to buy a fucking house with cash if you need to, yeah. right? Mm. Cash will cease to exist. It, it is the way we're going. So when cash ceases to exist, that's your fail-safe for people to spend money and own money and hold resources mm -hmm. and if you all you've got is cbdc and all your money's there completely under control of the government and you bring in things like universal basic income it makes it even worse that's where you were going with yeah. that right and just to add the wasn't the didn't he cancel or sorry with restrict their bank accounts over wasn't it over vaccine status or something like that wasn't it over the vaccine or was it a, ma sure a vaccine that. mandate <coughs> I, I, heard, I, I heard there was something to do it was something to do with the vaccine mandate across the board and then they worked out actually that even after he restricted their accounts that if you worked out per person there was more truckers vaccinated than the actual population Per, per, if you oh, really? Per, yeah, per person. It was a fucking joke. It was just... It just didn't anyway, peeling back, peeling back from that, Luke, yes. I'll ask you a question. Are you right? Yeah, yeah. I just got... Um, <clears throat> I'm getting over conjunctivitis and this cigar smokes. Oh, cigar smoke will help with that, yeah. yeah. That'll help, yeah. So I if everyone sees uh, it looks really steamy in you, it's because we we're smoking cigars. Luke, yes. what was, uh, what's it been like? <clears throat> what has it been like in, uh, in your profession, paramedic, yeah. medic, ambulance service over the last four years? Four years. Uh, three years. Two years. Three years. Batch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, busy. Always busy. But um, busier on top of being busy, I guess. So, um, sorry. Forward. Um, yeah, man. No, just, just really busy. It's stressful at times. Um, obviously, I, I guess you you want to refer to COVID, isn't it? Have the, no. Until you purge. Um, it's not just that. You've got the NHS crisis going on at the minute as at well. At the minute, yeah, yeah. Um, I think yeah, we just um, there's not, just not enough um, resources for the for the population, um, and I guess the the system that that we run on at the minute in the way of how it's triaged and what patients we go to doesn't really <coughs> doesn't really work. Um, so our resources get tied up, meaning the people that really. What's wrong with it? Um, so, well, as as a whole, in just in my personal opinion. I think there's just not an education into what the uh, ambulance service is, is there to provide and what it what it can provide. Um, so, and then with that, you have the, you have the hospitals that are um, just overcrowded and too busy. So you just have this huge backlog. Um, so within the system itself, um, you know, it comes down to yeah, not enough resources, not enough paramedics, um, and with the public not being this bit's my opinion the public not being able to self-care enough and taking for granted what what it is that the service they've got um so when we get called out to <coughs> category one or category two because the triage system goes from category one to category four we usually deal with category one to category three and then you have a national time frame that you have to respond to, to each category so category one would be like a life-saving immediate life-saving intervention would be needed um, but the way that comes down the phone, if people know what the buzzwords are to say on the phone, on the triage system itself, before I get called, they can say, well, I guess people I can say. Don't that. say it on you. Yeah. So the certain words that people can, people can use, which would, would then call out. Escalate the service. Would, would, would pump you up to a category one. Um, and then you'd, you'd arrive on scene and that person may be bleeding, but you're talking about maybe a bleeding nose and that's come as a character so it all depends on relying on what the person is saying over the phone because the call handlers can't see the person they have to take people for the word and so you get a lot of regular callers a lot of people that abuse the system <clears throat> and i think where i work in the, in the city in london um i've worked i've worked in different areas in the country so i think it i what i work out to myself is the more people hear and see an ambulance hear that noise which is which is often in london you can't go down the street without you hear it constantly people become used to it and think it's okay to call. But if you went to like a more of a rural area where people don't hear that noise and see all the time, it's not the norm. So people don't call it unless they actually need it to, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Where if you hear that noise and see it, you know that you know that resource is there to use and then people abuse that resource. And for things, I've honestly liked the stuff I've been out to. I take photographs on my phone of some of some things. I yeah. obviously keep the, the confidentiality yeah, yeah. and the stuff in that way and I delete it. Um, <clears throat> but like yeah we can get called to people with hangovers headaches 22 year olds who get around and say they've got a headache hangover and you're like okay and you've taken any paracetamol they're like no 
and they just can't self care. <coughs> we also, but when we were on that resource, for me then to even do that, to walk in, see that patient, the paperwork after will take me at least 45 minutes to an hour to, to write up just to cover my own self that I've covered, made sure that they're not going to drop dead of a, even though they're not going to drop dead of a stroke or some a brain tumour in, in the 24 hours time where then I had to, I'd, be, I'd be culpable and have to go to court and explain my actions. So you then have to spend 45 minutes writing up all the things that I've considered and to put into place to make sure this simple headache is just a simple headache. There is a, there is like a, there is a worrying, <coughs> there is simply a, a, like a worrying increase at the moment. And like, like we're going towards the same thing, but like the problem with America, right? Fair. Well, America's, America's like hasn't got too much of a problem that way because if you go to, like when I went to New York, I was expecting to similar, but you've all been to London, you, you hear that, that, that the sirens constantly, don't you? In New York, you don't. And the reason is because you've got to pay for it. So for it? when people have to pay for it, they think before before they make that call here, people don't understand that it's, they think it's free. It's not. We're all, what we're what I was going to say Sorry. was the worrying progression <laughs> towards what Amer the, pro the problem America have got is where people have a reliance that when they have an issue, like they completely like e purge, they completely omit the option to self help first, and they go to external help. They go to external help first. Can like we get, like I get ill. I'm not saying I'm like the mm -hmm. fucking beyond land all, but it's just something I'm aware of because of America. I get ill. I try and help myself first. I drink like first thing I do when I, I think I'm ill. Like I start drinking plenty water, of water. Yeah. I make sure I take my vitamins and my minerals, and I make sure I'm eating eating properly. And I see what it's. Like. This is obviously not an emergency situation, but from poorly, you know. Whereas for a lot of people, especially in America, which is why this is is. Front, front and center of my mind like over here is a lot of people they'll default to pop the pills go to the gp go to it and people will use it especially now where it's so difficult to get a gp appointment well that's people will go to fucking a and e well, for a non-emergent yeah. they do well, and no 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 i know i know they do and it and that is that is the knock-on effect of the whole of the whole problem is um and the, the, some people will self um, admit to A&E. Majority, from my experience, this is just my personal experience and opinion, is um, that they don't. They'll they understand now that they that I can do personally what a GP can easily do in what their GP does in eight minutes. I can spend an hour with you, and I can probably I can do more. I can look at your heart. I can read your ECG. Where we need, uh, uh, GP would refer because you've you got on. the equipment. <laughs> yeah, so we we can do that, and people are now so much so more savvy towards that that. And fair enough, in some cases, you give, I, I try to get a GP point the, the other day, and I'm like, I've got to wait for two and a half weeks just to go and see my GP down the road. And so with that, with certain people, they'll be like, well, fuck it. Just GPs just are grafting as well, though. They do. No, no. I wasn't saying that. My, my mm. surgery, right? I got a call. So my surgery, if I book a GP point, I can only, <clears throat> I can only book an appointment by phone. Yeah. And uh, sorry, sorry, I can only book an appointment. It'll be a phone appointment with the, with the surgery. I never get at the time it's supposed to be. It's like a 10 minute slot. Like, let's say I book it for 10 past 11. I never get at the time it's supposed to be. And I rarely get it on the day I'm supposed to have it. But the last two appointments I've booked, which was, which was supposed to be at a certain time of the day, I've had a couple of days late. And the last one I had, she called me back at 6 30, 7 p.m. on a Friday. Like yeah, they, the, they, they the, the surgery is not even open. No, but I, I, I like that. It's like I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm disappointed it has to happen. Mm -hmm. But that is that GP taking on her shoulders to go. I need to deal with these people. I'm doing overtime. She ain't getting paid. Of course, she's getting paid. No, of course she is. they're getting paid. She's getting paid. Of course they're getting paid. Why she's would on call? Why would they not be getting paid? No, but she's just G. No, of course she's, she's on call. Of course she's getting she's paid. She's on call. They rotate. No, <coughs> it was a, it was a book the point. Yeah, yeah but she's still she's still getting paid. Oh, paid. I want to I want to feel like she did. There's no, there's no it makes it more romantic. There's no GP. Eyes. I'm sure there's what one shot, there. What shot me that, and what you? Sorry, go on. There's no GP that sat there in their own time at seven o'clock at night going. I'm not going to go home. I'm going to make sure I'm going to make sure he was okay. Of course get paid. And rightly so get paid. What I will say and what I'm shocked at is what you said when you said then. People are not self-medicating. No, I didn't say self-medicating. I said self-care. Self-care, sorry. Right. So that is just... A, what you just demonstrated there, that is a natural thing. I've got a headache. I'll just take some paracetamol. I'll do this. I'll, what stage are people at where they don't understand that? Where they don't understand basic... Well, it's education, but, isn't it? It's education. It, but it's, no, 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 no. It can't be education. Well. Surely you know... If something's wrong or not, you don't have to. You don't, if you've got a headache, you don't need to bring an ambulance. But no, but that's what that's what I also said with caveat to that was that in the place in the city I work, which is a busy city, is if this is again just from my own personal experience and my own thoughts, is that <coughs> because people hear and see ambulances all the time, that it's the norm. So to pick up the phone to do to, to call one is the norm because we're there all the time. 
Whereas if you lived in a more rural area where you didn't see an ambulance all the time, you maybe, reckon? maybe, yeah, yeah, just, it's just my own personal observation. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I have no like yeah. scientific thing behind this. I'm just in my, in my, when I'm, when I'm working, that's what, what I, what I sometimes think is that because people see it and hear it and in certain areas of London, a lot of areas of London, you're, you're dealing with, and I don't mean this in any offensive way whatsoever, but you're dealing with a poorer uh, class of society, a poorer element of society, and I do, I do believe that some of the education that does does come into does come into that of to what self care to be able to have the knowledge that you can go to the pharmacy. A pharmacy can give you the great advice. It doesn't need to be giving you medication, but can give you advice. You can self um, self admit to A and E, which a lot of people don't do. But to call an ambulance is that. every person's got that. You got yeah, you've got that. But, uh, <coughs> but even if you like, you ring you, you ring the likes of like one 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 or that. Most advice will be they'll just call it call an ambulance. And uh, and with the GP element, pre COVID, a GP, a lot of GPs, not all GPs, wouldn't know the scope of practice of what we can do as paramedics. So they just think we're ambulance drivers. A lot of people think we're ambulance drivers. We get called ambulance drivers all the time. Um, but we, we have degrees in medicine, so. But now, through COVID, where the GPs weren't open and we were used a lot, they, they understand the capability and what we can actually do and trust us a lot more, and rightly so. But now, it kind of the knock-on effect of that is GPs are a lot more happier to go, yeah, guy, call an ambulance. And yeah. they'll come and <laughs> you'll be like, have, like, you ever, have you ever been in an ambulance? I mean, Blue lights, yourself as a patient? Me, no. No, I wouldn't even dare. Steve? Yeah. Go yeah. on. Yeah. Um, drunk and disorderly. What blue lights in an ambulance? Yeah. What kind yeah. of police car was that? Drunk and disorderly. What was the reason? Oh no, I thought you meant ambulance. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah well, you said drunk and disorderly. That's a crime. I pissed and shat myself, and I was throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> I was throwing up all the side of the road. And the, the police use us a lot as well, as we use the police and fair dues to those. Um, and then the big one, our biggest things for for, uh, for the area I work in is is mental health. So. Let's say when I do when I, all my shifts are twelve hours. Let's say on average I can see between five and eight patients in that twelve hours, depending on the severity of what I'm getting called out for. Three of those patients, maybe four, depending on the night, will be mental health related. I remember you telling me a story about a about a patient. Be careful. Who, what go, we're going to talk go, about. Before, yeah, before we stop here, let's. No, let's, I was talking to Jared. Oh, okay. No, no, go on. Let's, Jared, let's, I remember you telling me a story <laughs> about, um, about. No, you can say I can. I'm allowed to log this conversation. But wait, 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 wait. Let's just add. Okay, listen to what he just said. I don't. He does No, no, no. This is for everyone else who ever listens. Twelve hour shift, and he's dealing with all that sort of shit and people wonder why they go on strike well we go we go on strike go on say i don't wonder i understand it no 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 no, no, no. But, no but there's people out there that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, trust think, me there's people out there that I don't think, understand i think it. the people that don't understand the people that like it likes to say that our, our our description is for people that don't use ambulances as well is is ambulance driver like it was back in years and years and years ago and so i think we go to a patient's house pick a patient up taxi service them to a hospital the doctor sees them um so when people listen to the strike thing, they just think, "Oh fucking hell, they just got just driving." Just lorry drivers. Yeah. Just they, don't, they don't understand that what the actual what we actually deal with, what we go to, the different severities of patients, and we deal with all sorts from a headache to births. Given, given, I've given, I've, I've uh, uh, helped deliver eight eight children, eight babies in my whole career. Amazing. Heart attacks to strokes to car accidents to suicides to a lot of mental health to stabbings to violence to drug overdoses and to old people be breathing problems. What's the most common thing you get called to? Common? Out of everything is it would be... No, 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 this is a good question. I know, that's why I asked it. <laughs> no, but it's no, <laughs> this is, no, Christ. wait, wait, no, no, this on. is a good question to guess. He works in London. Let's guess. Yeah, go on. Yeah. I'm going to say stabbing. Okay. I would say no, it's not. But it depends. But, right, but well, I said stabbing. Yeah, yeah. Jared, I'd say old people. Nonsense. Okay, it's good. So are you saying you saying stabbing? I'm saying stabbing. Old people. Old people. But what do you mean, old people? Well, just the. Go on, go on, say it. The shit that. Go on, say yeah, it. Yeah, no, right, just general yeah. medical, general, yeah. general illness. Yeah. yeah. What well, comes with age? No, let yeah. him say it. In elderly people. <laughs> Um, yeah, and Jared, Jared is great. Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be like, it will be like elderly. I didn't want to guess anyway, but go oh, on. Sorry, mate. No, sorry, it's fine. Sorry. It, what were you going to say? What was going to be your guess? Gingers. Uh, elderly. <laughs> gingers. <laughs> gingers, because gingers uh, spreading disease. Our, yeah, our, our most, the most common caller will, will be, it's an elderly population, isn't it? So we'll be like people with what you call like COPD, so you breathing difficulties, um, general, yeah, just general medical illness that um, like 
ab abdominal pain, back pains and things, again, which is what we shouldn't get called out for to a degree. Um, but the elderly as a whole, for sure. And um, some of the elderly we go to is like a lot of social, like we could, you could turn into like social workers and, and a lot of it's social problems where people are just lonely, but they're just all just anxiety with elderly people, like depression, anxious, lonely. Did that go up through the pandemic? Um, um, sorry, mate, I thought you were asking that. Um, what, were the elderly were alone in some things? No, not necessarily. I think what, the pandemic was interesting. So when when it first, when the, when, it, when, the, when the first wave, let's call it the first wave came through and everyone thought it was the end of the world, <coughs> then obviously our, um, our, our call outs like, were just, Went, f went through the roof like in, in over like 40 hours just went, 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 went mental and a lot of that was 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 through um, uh, people being anxious and scared um, and then it turned into people that actually really 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 sick um, but then what happened when people realised what was happening is like you've got to imagine when it, we weren't so prepared as an ambulance service we were going from house to house to someone else's house to this house and we were like super spreaders distance. so we were, the, oh. we were the ones going like from this person to this person to this person and the PPE wasn't as great and whatever was happening didn't make a difference. So eventually people kind of like clicked onto that and got scared. But like, I, I ain't calling an ambulance. Oh, really? And so with them, for the first time in my whole career, we'd have, we could have shifts where you maybe see one patient, two wow. patients. And it just went dead. <laughs> Cancel our strike. They deserve what they get paid. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, and then, so it just go, just go through little, just go through little waves. And then it was, then when the second wave, but this is like, at that point, people, people were, were sick. And then the second wave came through, and then the second wave was like way worse than the first wave. And the second wave was, it, it was difficult because then you, people were experiencing the backlog at hospitals. So during the, from the first wave to the second wave, the hospitals have got themselves in order. So for the first wave to go to hospital, the hospitals had to redesign the whole A&E system. You had to then suddenly have uh, red rooms and green rooms and the whole path of taking a person into into A and E had to change because you're then bringing infected people in, but you've got people that aren't infected, and it was, it was just chaos and crazy. And every hospital was different, in fact, because how they're designed and mm -hmm. how they had to work this way through. No one had ever done this before. So when it came down to the second wave, and everyone was organised to to a degree as organised you can be, but also by the time the second wave happened, there was medications, antivirals, and things. So what would what would happen is you would bring a patient in, and they would survive or surviving longer. And then when you came to bring in another patient, there's no bed space because they're not dead, but they have to stay in hospital. And then you had this backlog. And then you had people in car parks where we have ambulances waiting and people fucking dying in the back of ambulances. And people come around and going, how old is this patient? Like, mm -hmm. What's going on? Okay, then you're staying there. And we've got a 32-year-old in there. Yeah, I talked to a nurse. <coughs> a nurse came on. She, she works, well, she ex-army nurse. In fact, she was working for the NHS when she was in the army. And she was saying like that... that it was the first time ever that she saw people getting triaged in car parks. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. On the car park. Yeah, in yeah, the yeah. car park. Yeah, yeah. You don't even get to the A&E fucking reception. You're in the car park and someone's coming yeah. out going, yeah. And then on top of that, <laughs> Wait, gonna be four and hours on top of that you've got these young paramedics and middle but you've got paramedics so then stuck in the back of a fucking ambulance. And you're getting told you can stay in like, what, in this, in this box that's smaller than this where you want me to stay in this patient this way. And you're like, yeah. And then you've got that stress and anxiety of like, well, we're getting... We so get, an ambulance could come to a... Am I reading this right? An ambulance could come yeah. to a patient, pick uh -huh. them up, and they'd be sat outside the house in the ambulance for a couple of hours because yeah. there's nowhere to go. Yeah. There's, they know there's no space at the, at the, at the hospital. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no point even going. Yeah. And we, we went through, so how we dealt with it, again, for, um, for who I work for, um, and I guess every service was different. So to begin with, we have this um, thing called like a new score of how you can, from a person's respiratory rate, how many times you're breathing in a minute, to the heart rate, to the oxygen level. And then when you, when you work that out, you can go onto this like little algorithm and it gives you like a number between one and I think like 13 or 40, I may be wrong, but it goes high. <coughs> and then at first, so what, what happens on a daily basis with that, if you have someone that, that uh, equates to like a new score of uh, like four, and above, then you can blue light them into hospital. Um, at some one point through the first wave, we had to put that up to like seven. So a new person who's scoring seven and below, you can maybe keep it home. You're fucked. If you've got new scores home below, you're pretty fucked. Um, so you're probably going to... Give me an example of, of what condition time <coughs> could be in for a seven. A seven would be... Like, I'd have to work out, but some, some paramedic could pick me up on this. But um, a seven would be like, so your, your, let's say your oxygen, your oxygen um, level, your SpO2 level within, within your system would be like 94 and below. Your respiratory rate would be like around between 20, 21 to 23. What's normal for a respiratory rate? Um, normal would be like between 12 and 16, 17 mm. for what we're doing now just naturally. 
Um, but all these different things like marry up together. So if you've got a quick respiratory rate, let's say you're breathing at a, res a respiratory rate of 20, 21, 22, and then your oxygen level is below 94. So you, your system within itself, your respiratory system is, isn't, isn't working and it can only get worse. Is the second number always higher than the first? In what way? In respiratory, you said 21, 22, and then you said 14 and 16. Is no, no, so you, you, your average, uh, what, we, what we're breathing now between us would probably be on average between... Maybe not like, with a cigar smoke. But yeah, yeah, between 14 and like 16 would be like, 12 and 16 would be a normal yeah. like okay. person's breathing pattern. All right. Anything over that, it means your body's having to, to, to overwork, for, and then you've got to find what, why. Why is your body trying what, to... But what do you mean overwork? Sorry, I mean... As in, so you're, you're, breathing, you're breathing fast for... for but a, you give two numbers, so is it, would it be 20 and 14? Is it, is it like that? Because you keep saying 12. No, no, I mean, in between, in between 12 is a minimum, and like a normal rate would be like a respiratory rate of 12 a minute, but you could have someone that's breathing a, a, a minute of 16 breaths a minute. That's normal between 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So that's normal. Yeah. Anything over that, then your body's overcompensating for okay. something like right. through, through breathing, through trying to gain okay. the oxygen. Is, but there's something wrong within your system for, right. your, for your body to have to breathe over something. Like the film The Whale? Well. I've not seen. It, yeah. um, and then, but with that, you may have a low oxygen saturation level, which is the oxygen in, in, your, in, your, in your red blood cells of what it can carry. And then, you, then with that, your heartbeat is going to go. So you, you, once one system starts to break down, the rest of your system will have to overcompensate yeah. and it all comes towards your heart. And then that's your body overcompensating. And then you've got to work out why is that body overcompensating. And during COVID, it, it, was, it was down to the spiritualness of COVID. Um, but no, yeah, luckily it was, it was busy. It was, it was stressful. Um, got paramedics that are young, like 20, 21, up to like your experienced ones that have been in for, for a number of years. And a lot of responsibility gets put on these young kids as such who have no life experience um, like we know for ourselves of how I, I would say like from, from my job for uh, if you did a study on PTSD for, for paramedics I would say it would equate to if not be more in 10 years time than people who have served abroad for sure <clears throat> I just think for the I just think through the level of responsibility that the, these 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 younger people get and anyone gets all of us get is when, when you're in the military we have a, we have a, we have a, the, a ranking system don't we we have right you go from private yeah. through to sergeant <clears throat> within the within the service you, you, the, there isn't that you do have you're a paramedic you have like different levels but the responsibility is still yourself you're you're the registered clinician and then you have a team leader but you're on your own yeah so when you when you when you arrive on onto a job if you're the if you're the paramedic and you're first on scene you're that's your scene. But, and you'll get there, let's say it's a road traffic accident and you'll have like police and fire service all dealing with it and they'll turn to you and go like, what do you want us to do? Like, are we closing this road down? Is this a life threat? And this is like a 22 year old is like, like Oh, and that's this on the paramedic, does it? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And that's a lot of responsibility on a 21 year old kid. So there's no, he, that person, he or she, um, doesn't have, be able to look right to a full screw or a lance yeah, yeah, jack yeah. or a sergeant and go so like, what do you want to do? It's like, no, like you decide what you want to do. Like you're, you're it. It's a lot. And then hopefully someone will come and, and back you up. And then, but that person that backs you up is going to be just the equivalent of you in rank. Like there's no rank. And then people wonder why they fucking strike. But it's like it's just a lot of responsibility. The strike. I'll be honest. The strike. The strike for me and the strike for a lot of paramedics. It's different from nurses. By the way, show our hands here. Who supports the strike? You love your votes. Don't you? you love it. Mate. <laughs> fucking democracy. We're living in democracy. Everyone um, supports the strike. But the strike. The strike for us. I'm sat with myself. Is is, is it's a money thing. It is a money thing. Um, and it is, but nurses are different, you know, they're, 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 it's the work conditions and the highlight the problem that the system's fucked and good on them because it's fucked. For, for myself, it's a money thing. It's, um, and I could be quite militant with it in, in at this moment in time in my life. It is like, how much is your life worth? Like, tell me, like, you want me to say, like, tell me, don't pay me. That's a broad statement. What do you mean? Oh, like, like for, for, the, for the money, the, for the money we earn, for for the, for what we do, service give, given, I don't, I don't, I, provide. given, I don't, I don't save someone's life every every time I go on a shift. I don't. I, I deal with deal with a lot of things, but it's not necessarily always life 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 intervention or life saving. It can be life changing for a lot of people. I, I help people's lives for sure on every job I go to. But then then payers. Like payers that payers the money that it, it, it deserves and it, and it and it's worth for the for the stress that we go through, for the hours we put in and um and for what we can provide. And so I can you want me to save your child's life? I don't, I don't mean this direct to the no, public. No, no, no. I don't mean this in a bad no, I mean to the, right. in the way of the government. Like, then pay us for what, what Listen, we are. You are, you're right. Thank you very much. You're 100% fucking right. Why should you, we're in a cost of living crisis at the minute, 
do you want your fucking child to be looked at by somebody who's coming out on a emergency call who's worried about putting the fucking heat in them? Who's worried about his fucking bill at the end of the month? Because he can't afford his rent anyway, but he can't afford his fucking bills anymore. And do you want someone? Do you want someone who's looking after your who, who you want who your child's choking, or your child has an accident, and someone's coming to get him? Do you want someone who's competent, who's relaxed, and has nothing to worry about, or do you want someone who's worried about their fucking yeah. bills? I think the two. I do think the two like, and it's not just because they're striking at the minute, but the two most important professions I think to people to society, the two most important. That's not to, that's not to say that others aren't yeah. important. The two most important are. Our health service, because we don't pay for it, and we take that for granted. Our health service, for the points you two just made, and also education system yeah. for a future generation. <laughs> like not I, only because I want my kids to be healthy no, in the future, uh, to be um, educated, capable, and, and, yeah. and perform well in the future, but also because I want, I want like us, Britain, and the human race to be as capable of as course. possible. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I think the the, the things that the, the as a society we, we should provide and spend money on. And pay like fucking top whack. The more you pay, the more selective you can be in that profession and the better people you can gonna get into that profession because those people are gonna wanna work in that profession, either for money or because of the passion and both. Is things that we all happen in life. So childcare, um, not childcare, sorry. Um, like things like uh, yeah, childcare in primary school from an, from an age onwards, teachers, fucking pay them. Mm. Pay them the most money that can make that profession so, it's non-negotiable. Yeah. It should be non-negotiable. Make it so attractive that these intelligent, smart people want to become teachers and teach. And then healthcare, for sure. Again, pay us or pay them. And then with that elderly, care homes. Like put, make, make, make being a carer such an attractive job that you get these most brilliant people that are going to be in there because we're all going to we're all young we're all going to need we all need we're all going to need it. and we're all going to need elderly care like make those professions each of them one of the so things I, so I interviewed a, a oh, that nurse i just spoke about mm. recently and uh, rachel body and she shouted their podcast her and her friend claire who's also an army nurse they run a podcast called just the mum podcast it's about mothering and nursing and stuff and a lot about mental health as well and stuff like that one of the things she pointed out is most of the time she was working for the nhs it was as a contractor and so one of the problems the NHS have got is because they're not paying people enough they've got a real recruitment and attention problem yeah, yeah. which means basically on the ground level they have gaps in their shifts so they need people in a short short yeah, notice and who can provide sub, people sub, with short subbies. Subbies. yeah who can provide people with short notice so, I'm just explaining it for yeah. people to understand they contract people in which costs, costs a shit an arm and a fucking like leg. I don't an know the amount, but it's a lot. And it is quite common, right? Mm. It's quite common across a lot of businesses. Like where I work, we will contract in people for various reasons as opposed to, like, if we like if we need to get someone in for three months, um, but we haven't got an employee in the business that can do that, well, to get an employee in, it's all these other fucking tricks, tricks in the box and stuff that you're going to employ in for a minimum for whatever, whatever many months it is and all the rest of it. So we get a contractor in, but we know we're paying top dollar for the contractor like two or three or four times the daily rate of what an employee yeah. is worth yeah. right now it's not unusual in business but you translate it to the nhs when it's a national health service where they should be running as efficiently as possible and they've known that there's these gaps for you never mind the pandemic mm. there's been gaps for years mm. and years and years for whatever reasons austerity measures and whatever fun isn't going down you think they become more efficient but for some reason they've been reluctant to make it as you said luke an attractive place to go and work and numero uno for attractive place to go and work is well paid compared to other jobs in the health industry yeah. numero deux is well treated it's like well paid you want to be well paid first you want to be well treated second that's what it is and they ain't doing it which means so the point they're making is which means these gaps in the in the system are getting plugged by contractors so we're, we're paying like two or three. So although we haven't got the employees, we being the NHS, we're paying shit loads more money on contractors than we should be. Yeah. So if we just like hit, like I generally think the quickest way to solve the problem in the short term is a massive increase in wages. And I mean, we're talking like five, I'm 10, 15%. Double. I'm talking fucking yeah, double. Across, across the board, right? Because that, because what that means is you get a massive injection of people wanting to work for the NHS. And you can be selected. You get a massive reduction in the need to contract out. So it's not going to cost, on paper, it would, it would cost X amount of millions to all of a sudden pay all this extra money. But you're saving it in your contract costs. 
the problem is on the bottom line, those look like two, in terms of costs for a business, they come out of two different parts. They look like two different mm. things and they present themselves in two different ways when you're talking about performance for a business, which it's all smoke and, mir smoke and mirrors at the expense of people in the in industry right now and people who are the customers. And, yes. and the thing is as well for, for my job and for, I think, for, I can't really talk about this because I don't fully know, but for, for my profession is yeah, you pay, you, you, we pay to go to university. So it's so you have people, you have kids that are coming. I call them kids. You have young men and women coming coming through, who who are who are already starting out in life with sixty thousand pounds of worth of yeah. debt, and they're paying sixty grand to come and work into a, a job where, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're working night shifts for twelve hours a day, on starting off at like twenty three, twenty four fucking grand a year, like with sixty grand in debt at the age of like twenty, twenty one. Which is fucking crazy. And then with that knock on effect is that if university is a business that you're paying into seven to nine thousand pounds a year and it's a three year degree, the universities, and I don't again, this is just my personal opinion, is they ain't gonna fate like if you want to be if you want someone to be in the medical profession, you want them to be good. So if you're paying nine thousand pounds a year, you as a university, you're not gonna fail. This job isn't for everyone. Exactly. It's not for everyone. It really isn't for fucking everyone. And the universities have a responsibility to pick out those people that aren't passing, not just to pass them. And they do. Why are they going to fail someone in the first year and fuck off eighteen thousand pounds? Exactly. They're not. And and I see. I, tra I I I've been an instructor. I train I train people all the time in my profession. I have students out with me constantly, which I enjoy. Um, but some of them are not like ready for, uh, for this for this job. And the university will go like, what's happening at university? Oh, they said that you'll teach me this. Or you'll do this again. This is the I problem. can, but I'm not it's not it's, I've not got time to fucking teach you. I a, can show you and I can do what we need to do, but you should already know. Listen, it's a listen. it's a it's a follow on problem from the lack of pay, lack of recruitment, lack of attention. You have to lower the bar for mm, people to get listen. in. Listen. You know, that happens across the business, isn't it? Um when you uh, I remember when you first went to work where you're working now uh -huh. and you said to me that the you said the burnout rate for people who go on the ambulances we work in is four years. About four you to said five generally years, yeah. four to five years, and then people are fucked. They can't do anymore. Yeah, they just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. and and then, um, it, and it's, it, it's. So how are you? How long? How many years have you done now? I am now seven years in London, and I did. Two, how are you managing it? Two years in you in Yorkshire. So how are you coping with it? Um, I'll be honest. Like I think I briefly mentioned it before. So um, I would be blip brutally honest. I mean, at that stage at the moment. Is um, so I'm, I'm currently, as of this week, off, off with what we call. I've took a, a, a two week to four week absence of leave due to what I've put down as stress, purely because I've got other other things going on in my life at the same time, and it's not necessarily stress through through the job. It's just I'm going through a, a, a specifically stressful time in my life, but the responsibility of me to to take this time off is because I don't want you don't want me turn up to I can't give you the best patient care that I can possibly give right now at this time in my life so you don't want me to come to you tired over over slightly overworked but other things going on in your life Mind on other things. exactly yeah yeah and it's like two o'clock in the morning and I've done 10 hours and I've got them work out uh, a formula for, for whatever medication I'm going to give you and my mind may be like wandering onto something else I'm a bit tired and thinking about what's going to happen next week or what I've got to do so I took a responsibility upon myself to and for other things but this taking into account is that right now I'm in a position where I can't give you the patient care that I should be and responsible enough to give you um, <clears throat> so yeah so I'm, I'm at that I'm, I guess I'm at that point a little bit but I'll stay it's not purely just to work I've got other things going on in life which is just it always used to blow my mind. Do you know what I always, I always used to find difficult? I don't know if you like this, Jared, right? Is um, in, when we were serving, I could manage C, A, B, C, D, right? Beyond that, I, I found it like too complicated. I just couldn't understand it. As in, I couldn't, uh, I would not want to, like to go on to something to be like a paramedic in the military or whatever the next stage up from fucking team medic was, you know, uh, whatever it was. Mm. I would not have been able to do it. I don't know what it was. It was like a mental block. Not to do with emotions or like that, yeah. but where I just wasn't able to calculate and assess things in a in a patient, a casualty, in the same way I could in everything else we have to do in the military. Mm. Jared, yes. have you ever been in evidence? <laughs> no. Why does that not surprise me? Have you ever been in an ambulance? 
Yeah, yeah I, and I, I tell people it was blue lights. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it was, but I'm not sure. I think it wasn't. Maybe yeah. not, but what happened? I, uh, I was in London <laughs> on the piss. That's just the escalator. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You may I, well have been. Yeah, and I got peer pressured. I was a weak person. I got peer pressured into uh, sliding down the escalator <laughs> at King's Cross. And I and someone said to me, and it was after, the, we were in the church. Yeah. And they said, slide, you know, slide down yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the fucking thing. Forget the Slide down that. Away. And I said, there's no way I'm doing that. I was pissed, obviously. No way I'm doing that. I'll fucking kill myself. And the person with, guy called Mark Hill. You ever know Mark Hill? No. No. Uh, Mark Hill said, uh, oh, but such and such did it from, and his, he named someone in, I think it was Mortars or whatever. He did it. Oh, well, I'm fucking doing it then. And I uh, jumped on the Mom. middle, slid down, got halfway. Hit the first petition Mom. and flew off. Hit a partition up and landed on the far side on my head on the escalator, split my head open, mm. split my arm open, it explains, like, gets out of my arm. Yeah, what a, what an it may not have been blue lighted. Probably the know. stupidest yeah. thing I've ever done in my life. So the, the way, the way that's, that's, that's an achievement. Yeah. <laughs> that's saying something. Yeah, the way it works for the blue lights is so, which is why people hear blue lights all the time, is so we put blue lights on to attend every single call because that headache may be a stroke. That headache, we don't know until we get there what it, what it actually is. So we, we blue light to every call. And then once we're at the call, and then we're dealing with the patient, depending on what's wrong with the patient is if we then, which is rarely, would blue light to hospital. If we blue light into hospital, we take you straight into resuscitation for, for doctors and consultants to see, oh. you, to see you straight away. But that's why people hear blue lights all the time, because we have to respond on blue lights, not necessarily taking someone to hospital. So the only way we go to hospital on blue lights is if we need to, you need to be seen straight away. You've hit a marker or hit something going on. Uh, I need a doctor. I probably wasn't blue lights. So. Possibly not. Probably not. Probably yeah. not. Have you experienced any 15 minute zone around London yet? You know, this 15 minute city. That's not create. in London. It's Oxford. No, you know, no, 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 no. Said he can't. So you want to in, 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 I'm asking a question. Oh, right. <coughs> no, I haven't. And, uh, and you know what? I don't know a lot about it, but I, I briefly read upon it the other day, briefly, and I don't, I don't know enough about it, but... That's you haven't experienced anything from it? I'm going to say They've no. They've not brought it in no. London yet. Yeah, but I'm asking... Why is he, why is he <coughs> doing this? But, but why not... is every question... No, no, hang on a minute. Why is every question he say important? I'm having a discussion here. Yeah, yeah, no. He ha but then he has to ridicule me. Yes, he has to ridicule you. Just because he's the host. I'm allowed to have a conversation. No is the answer. No, was the answer. No. There. Just making an observation. Like so you, you don't have to so, butt in. You don't so, have to so butt in. You don't have to butt in. So what is it? I'm asking the question of, have you no, experienced any issue no. with 50 minutes? Right, okay. But what about Ulez or anything? Is of course, it any... Ulez, yeah. But do you, have to, do, you have to, do you have to pay all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Is he, is he well, pay... I don't pay Ulez because my car's... Yeah, but what whatever. about travelling to work? Do you have to pay I that? I got a tube. I live 20 minutes away on the tube. So you don't have to pay any of that sort of stuff? No. Fucking hell. What do you mean congestion chart? What's your point? Yeah, just, I'm just worried no. about it. Listen, you're looking at me with a smile on your face. No, I'm asking. I'm, I'm, I'm worried hell. about Listen, I'm actually, You're very sensitive. You're no, very I'm, sensitive. No, I'm, I'm sensitive to you. <laughs> you are. Like listen, idiot. listen, when listen. I'm more capable of doing that myself. And I'm asking a question. I'm worried. Mm. Listen. I cost you guys. Come in a bit. Come in a bit. I'm, come I'm in, talking. Come I'm talking for I know. Come into the microphone. I am worried, genuinely worried, about people like Luke's cost of fucking living I genuinely am this no I so I'm of, no hang on a minute all right. okay he's got fucking bills to pay cost of living's going through the roof he's got a fucking stressful job my job's not stressful every job I work with stressful. no there's, there's different stresses mm -hmm. there's different stresses his job is not fucking stressful whoa, <laughs> whoa <right? laughs> His job is not fucking. Mine's stressful. a different if you, kind of if you spoke to Dr. Huberman, he is getting every fucking bit of dopamine he can get. He's getting daylight, he's getting fucking no time on his phone, he's getting interaction with animals, but he's then, getting every bit of dopamine you can get. But then that's that's smart of Jared, isn't it? So Jared, no, 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 Jared no, 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 we're not talking about that. We're okay. talking about but, you. So, we're talking about I you. I think it's fair to say that we all envy what Jared does. Yeah, Which well, I don't like a lot of dogs. Yeah, not not about being a Well, he's got a fucking Breitling watch on. Yeah. And he's the only person with a Bradley watch on. That's from his and I that's And I've been fitting in the watch, car right? chargers. Hold your watch up to this camera. No, the camera there. Not me. Camera there. Look at that, yeah. But no, what I'm getting... That's from his mercenary days. What do you think? What do you think? When we if you were a Star Wars character, I just want to point it out. You'd I'm be, not answering you'd this You'd be Anakin question. Skywalker. I'm not answering this fucking You'd be question. Anakin Skywalker. You would. Why do you think the government is so hesitant <laughs> to give people like Luke... A fucking pay rise. You can laugh. I think, want. to be fair, like I think, I've, why? I think, I think that this, the, the, the sitting down as we speak, maybe not as we speak, but the sitting down to they're talk. They're definitely not speaking so, as we so speak. So there's rumours that they're going to be given. So we've we've postponed strikes for now. 
And when we talk about strikes, by the way, for what we do, I'm sorry if this is boring, is um, when we strike, we don't do it properly, in my opinion, is we, we strike like twice a month on separate days. And we'll, yeah. we'll, our strikes consist of, they'll do There's like... Still it's still an shit. impact, though. It's like minimal. And, and the, impact, the impact that we have is that like we still... If the, so we, what, what happens when we go on strike? So we, we go to work. We don't get paid for that day. There's a picket line. I feel like I don't want you to tell people this. I feel like I want people to think it's a big impact. No, so no, no not at all. So, so, right. um, is the, so we, go, we go to work because it's, it's our shift. You don't get paid for that day, obviously, because you, you've chosen to go on strike. And we have a picket line which we stand behind. But if a Category 1 call comes in, there's a list. Everyone's getting And then the team, lead, the team leader will be like, you go in. You, know, you go to that. So you'll go, and you'll go to that Category 1. Cool. So people who are in life saving, who who need us for that that category, we, we still attempt. Why does so people have the no, fire no, service? No, then? Let, let's say again. No, no, no. We're, we're going to offer it again. We're talking about Luke here. No. Why are we going to a, a gate? I'm asking the question. Why do we think the government won't give them a pay rise? Well, we keep on dodging around. Why do we think we won't? I, give I, them I think the, the reason the reason the government uh, is because obviously we've gone on strikes and then and the way the unions work is. Everyone's gone on a strike at the same time. So if the government give us ten percent, then everyone get the police. Right, get yeah, the right. But 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 it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I think they're gonna give us the if money. We're talking. If we're talking about, and we're living in a democracy, it, it, surely right, we got the Democrats in. Sorry, we got the um, Tories in at the minute. Mm -hmm. Labour should be shouting from the rooftop here. 50%, 30%, 20% pay rise well, for if, every... Well, if they do that, then they come into power in two years' time, then everyone's going to go... Exactly, 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 exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So they can't do it anyway. So it's it's the same hand of the... It's one, sorry, it's one person of two puppets, isn't it? You're getting the same fucking person from either puppet. Well, it depends, isn't it? Why they're, they're can't we fucking give it? I think they're going to give it. We give money away like it's going out of fashion. I think... I think the, by the... Why can we not give it to what people want? I think I think potentially we're going to get given it. I think by the sounds of things, I think we get. You would imagine the rumours is they're going to give us a, a one-off payment for this last year or so, and then in April when our our pay whatever gets reviewed, I think they're probably going to offer us a certain amount. Why uh, why shouldn't a decision like this, right, which involves public spending, mm. why shouldn't a decision like this fall Follow with public the people? people? Why shouldn't it? Don't you mean? So, so well, why should we talk about public spending? We have spending. technology we're not, here yeah, that yeah, we can fucking yeah, yeah. on. So we're talking about public spending. Why should a decision like this, which is obviously mm. very close to people's hearts, government, it's a massive decision. Be given this, to people. Whatever the decision is, it's going to impact people massively. Uh -huh. Why isn't it, doesn't it sit with us? Well, it does sit with it us. It sits with, sits with us well, by, by you because we voted for the government that's in power. So yeah. that is the decision. Yeah, but they're shit houses. You. Well, okay. But We're the majority of people voted for the Conservatives to be 12 years ago. How long ago? Yeah, but so that, that, that's not the same... Landscape is what we're dealing no, with but right you, now. You can't just. By the way, I know we talk I'd like it. It'd suit me. No, yeah, I'm with you. But, we're but together. you can't. We can't. We can't. Uh, we don't have the society to be able to go. But put, that's put, what we need. Put a party in power, and then for every major decision, we're going to throw it back to the public to vote on. No, but there, a, like, there is a there is a problem. <laughs> where, where, do, where, do you, where does it where does it stop? No, but there is a there is a problem at the minute, right? Where definite a definite problem where. Um, we did it once, it fucked we, up. That you, what, 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 to say that right now, that um, we're in a, this is my Distrust. own personal opinion, to say that we're living in a democracy where the people make the decisions because we vote in the government that's in power, uh -huh. that only works if the government that's voted in power are actively consulting with the public on all the decisions they make, need to make. On a and deliver basis. on the mandates um, that they promised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, the, but there, obviously there needs to be a level. Mm. If there was a case where we say, no, the government should consult with the public on every single decision they need to make, no. There needs to be a threshold. Okay. And I feel like the threshold has been fucking escalated to such a level where we are, seem, seems to me at the moment, like we only have the opportunity to influence, the public only has the opportunity to influence a decision if it involves things like joining or leaving a union or joining, you know, or joining in fact, pretty much that. Yeah. Joining or leaving a union, it doesn't even involve enacting or or get rid of laws adjusting laws lock, adjusting no, because you can't you so, no, so, but you, no go on you can luke you, you can but we used to but we used to we can you can't so, you can't involve the public on on you like can. i didn't see it no <laughs> sorry 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 i'm not saying we should involve the public on everything mm. let's go back to the point it's okay. making this is like this discussion about the have you got any tissues i can use mate anything to blend the nose on no 
Oh, I got wet wipes. There's a T-shirt, yeah. HR T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> where, where the... <laughs> but he's wearing. By, he's wearing, by, 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 by the way, which I'm wearing, and Hugh said that uh, Combat Cigar <laughs> T-shirt was a waste of fucking time. There goes me a jumps. <laughs> Have you got a wet wipe? Um, t-shirt. Behind, the, t-shirt. behind that screen there, behind you, there's some... Um, but, like, but literally, no. see that light? To Hugh's, underneath the light. To Hugh's point. Two, yeah, two, two seconds. To your underneath, point two, there. Two seconds. Underneath the light, yeah. It should be. I've always said that. I've always said when it comes to real big public spending, what, what we were laid the on. public should have a fucking. But then, but then, but then, let's think about this for a second, okay? This is what's, what comes to me. How, if we say yes to that, how will how will the news change? How will how will mainstream media change? How will narratives change into pushing whatever you want to do? Yeah. You know. I think Cameron would have said that. Yeah, go on. Um, yeah, so to your point, yeah, to your point, Luke, is that it used to be the case, right, that this is why MPs exist, or, or why they the why they exist right now. It used to be the case that the MP, there was no way of communicating what, like, Warwick, for example, what Warwick felt about a another um, situation. Yeah. And MPs existed so they could, they were nominated as the, as the respected, trusted person, and their job would be to go to London, to Parliament, and say, hey, Parliament, this is what the people of Warwick want to do. Yeah, and that, and that, yeah, and that MP would be re- re- responsible for doing that. What you have now is... Shit re- houses. What you have now is, repeatedly, in fact, most of the cases, um, MP will go to Parliament and they will make a decision, and they will make decisions against. They go, not no, against... Without even asking. Okay, they will <laughs> make decisions against what the majority of the constituency think because they're not only thinking about the, of what the constituency think which is what they should be thinking about so back to my point is you cannot like government it would cripple government if we said you need to consult the public on everything every fucking decision right so we have to trust them works. we have to trust them with the major with, with the majority of things to make the right decision based on what the people think right and, exactly but when they get in power people's points change and all the rest of, of course. it but I feel like the bar, which, uh, the bar yeah. which uh, below the bar is what they don't have to consult us on. Dude. Above the bar is what they do have to consult us on. I feel like above the bar there used to be forty percent of things. Okay. Really? Now is fu- I'm just fucking pulling numbers. Up yeah, 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 yeah. The point I'm making is the bar above the bar now is less. So it's maybe ten percent. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, maybe, it's maybe, yeah. Te- it's maybe too sensitive. It's maybe ten percent, right? The NHS situation, I would argue, this is critical. It's hu- yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got it. It's critical, right? Mm-hmm. It's huge. Why are we not being consulted on it? Why are we not being? Be- uh, okay. Why not? Because, because as as a whole, for, as in, I, and I'm not slagging off as a, well. I am slagging us off because it's true. Um, is that we do, we don't as a, as a as a as a group of people of human beings in this country and most countries. We don't have the full understanding of what it means. Easy to go. Tell you what, give them, give them more fifteen percent pay rise. People don't understand the knock-on effect. To what, when we what, were, what uh, when we were, I would love that to happen. By the way, but agree, I'm just yeah. being objective. Towards I agree. It. When uh, we were serving, the, try sorry to jump in. Right? So yeah, yeah. I agree. Right, but nobody does have a full understanding. I'm One sec. Well, nobody has. A, nobody does have a full understanding. And the higher up the tree you get, the more understanding they think they have. But they don't. Yeah. Okay, it's the same as this. When we were serving, you see the thing called it. When we were serving, used to be a thing called the unit average. Mm-hmm. And if, as, yeah. as an example, and this I'm really like baseline, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm sort of explaining for people listening. If we were doing a judging distance exercise, for example, and, and you would look from here and you see a tree in the distance and you'd say, I'd say, look, how far do you think that is? And you would like try and work it out. And you'd say, oh, I don't know, maybe 350 meters, yeah? Whereas if you got the whole unit, let's say there's eight of you in a section, there's a section of you, a platoon of you, and you went across everyone and said, how far do you think it is? And you took everyone's answer, and then you took the average of the answer, okay. yeah, it would give you the answer it, of the how far away you thought it was. It would. That's how voting works. That's how perception works. It, it, That's how democracy is supposed to work. It would, but what if the, the mean average of the general population are fuckwits? It's not about whether. Well, okay, go on. Go on, go on. <laughs> that go put on. him on the spot, didn't it? Because it's you, about perception. The, the answer would be, and I don't mean this. Well, I do mean it, actually. You do I, mean I do it. with public you do all mean the time. It. And it's your money. It's the, your and life and the, 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 the mean answer would be not the, the most educational and responsible answer. It would be the, the most uneducated answer. Listen. And then you'd have to give. No, you're that. going across the average, though. Yeah, I, I would. I would say the general yeah. population on average 
haven't got a, a clue. What the general about. population haven't got a clue of is what the fucking government spends money on. Well, That's what they don't have a fucking clue of. True. Because you've got governments throwing money at things. Like, I keep going back to the US. All right, we're not far. We're not far from the fucking US. But we're US. not the US. No, 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 listen. But we're not far from the US. Take, you're, take, you're shouting. Take, okay, but take you're 10%, like, 10% off. Right. Take 10% off it. Take 10% off it. Okay. So the US have donated 100 billion fucking dollars to the Ukraine. Okay? okay. That doesn't mean we have, but what have we donated? What have we done it? If they donated a hundred billion, what have we donated? I don't two, know. three, two, three billion. What oh. are we? What? Well, well, no, no, no. Hang on a minute. And we can't subsidise our fucking NHS with wages. We're taken for fucking mugs. We have money to. No, no, no. We no, have no, money. I said that. No, no. <laughs> but that we have money to throw <laughs> away. <laughs> we got. We haven't got money for roads. We haven't got money for this. We haven't got money for that. Bullshit. We've got money for it all. They don't want to fucking give it out. They like to keep fucking people poor. The rich, do you think the rich people, do you think the rich use the NHS? No. No, they didn't, Don. They use private NHS. So why would they be in their interest to supply them with good fucking healthcare? It's they true. haven't. It's half true. They haven't, okay? They'll keep everybody fucking paying for it, but they, look at where they spend the fucking money. Where? Oh, we've got 10 minutes left. You've only got really? to look at it. You've only got to look yeah. at it. Yeah. You've only got to look at the money. We have no. <laughs> That's fine, you can lift, laugh I, and jog all you want. We're not, hey, oh, hey, hey, we're not. Laughing long, chill out, relax. You get no, very, listen. I'm not, I'm, I've get... got a smile on my face. I'm not pissed off. <laughs> I've got my main man here, I've not seen him for a year. I love him dearly. I've got him who can't be asked to come out tonight. <laughs> even though, because his missus said he can't go out. So it's fine. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll go out and have a good time. But what I'm saying is, listen. There's fucking money there. Don't you ever think for one second that they say we can't afford this, we can't afford that. They can fucking afford to pay my man here what he fucking deserves. Let that sink in. They can afford to pay him. They but they won't because they're too they busy might. spending your money on shit. There we go. Moving on from that topic. Yeah. Jared, have you got anything like to say? <laughs> Ring Jen and ask. Um, yeah. Oi. I was a bit annoyed at a uh, military. <laughs> Go on. Uh, so moment, Pat, Jared, tell, tell, us, tell, us your thought, tell us your thoughts on, on the Ukraine. No, hang on, hang on. Don't do that. Okay, no? Okay. No, because do, do you want to talk about Ukraine? Why not? We're invested enough in it. Uh, he was talking then. Okay, so, sorry, we, we wound him up. We got him, we got him talking. I said, wound him up in a good way. Mm. Come on. What, do you, what, do you want, what were you going to say, Jared? So... The British Army are going to spend a shitload of money on a new rifle okay. for Again. special forces. Well, the Ranger bat Bear bat Battalion, mm -hmm. okay. right? It looks like they'll be going probably for a Glock uh, assault rifle. Because, is that, is that good? Right, because the Ranger Battalion, yeah. Glock's German. The Ranger Battalion won't necessarily be engaged in the en enemy, yeah? They're going to be like doing ad advisory roles like Ranger Battalions do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But they've turned around and said, basically, the SA-80 is not good enough. Mm -hmm. It's not a reliable enough weapon for that for them. But they're not even going to be really engaging in any enemy forces, yeah? The people who are engaging in the enemy forces, the infantry, the paras, whatever, yeah? They're getting still lumped with the SA-80. So the military are going to spend shitloads, I mean billions, yeah. on a new weapon, which is the dog's bollocks possibly going to be made by Glock, which is going to be Glock's first ever assault rifle. Oh, purposely made. for these, Pur for this? Yeah. Okay. Purposely for these. Why would right? you go with a company doing the first ever of a product? Well, 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 here's, well here's, here's the good thing. Let yeah. me go carry on. on. Go on. Right. I'll counter this. I'll counter this. Because basically, go on. Go on, there's, there's, other, there's, other, um, there's other manufacturers in the uh, bidding, but they already, they've already got the Glock 17 side uh, pistol. Yeah, so just arm. So on that it country. would make sense. They've yeah. already got in their pocket yeah. Glock car in the military, you know. Mm -hmm. So it would kind of would it would it not be like I, I mate? I, 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 you know a lot more that I I hundred percent you know a shitload more than me about this this kind of subject. But would it like just on the other side of the fence of that? If if this happened, could it not be looked in a in a positive way of that? Once this contract's up and running, that it can be looked at. This can then get. Pushed out, pushed to, the out to the wider army. Like a gateway yeah. but to it, change the it. The thing, it, it won't, you see, because <laughs> they've had the SA for so long. <laughs> no, no, yeah. They've invested so much what? money in it to get it to but the standard it is. Mm -hmm. The fact is, they're going to waste millions, billions even, mm -hmm. on a new weapon system for a battalion or a force that won't really, right. <coughs> don't really necessarily uh, need. Wasn't there, 
that kind the people who are engaging should yes. be having the good weapons. Was it, but what, really the whole army should be Wasn't having the it. SE80 as well? That was a, in, an individual contract, like what you're talking about. And we had the option to take yep. on an American option yep. that was 50 pence per weapon we could have cheaper. Had, we could have the Canadian DeMarcos, right? Which would we have been a bit more expensive, but basically... It's, I thought it was 50 pence cheaper. But, but, uh, I it was something, it was, but it basically, was something very because minuscule. It's because... Um, is British made, which the SA now isn't really British. No, it's, it's not more British. Austrian no, because yeah. it's Hecker yeah. Cop mainly. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, the point is, we're wasting a lot. Well, they could waste a lot of money, but they are. They're going to waste a shitload of money, kitting out people that really who have turned round to the military and said, "This isn't good enough. We, yeah. We're not going to issue this." But it's good enough for the people like infantry that are actually engaging, who need to see some weapons. Yeah. It's different when it's special forces, because they're on a different budget. And Royal Marines, the Navy, they're on a different budget. The Royal Marines don't use SA-80s hardly anymore. What do they use? The, the, the the Marco, Marco, they? Or, yeah. yeah. The what, as a, as a general... Yeah, yeah, M4 no, style, standard. M4-styled standard. M4 rifles. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Right. But the British Army... SA-80. Well, like I said, so when we did... Uh, were, you guys, were you guys in when we did the trial? Oh, here we go. Trying to fucking show us off now, look. Like. <laughs> trying to make up. We've been in longer than you two. We know more about this, not the other. Who? These fucking two. <laughs> no, no, trust me, wait for the question. Getting back, my point ask is... Question, were, you, were you in doing Telic fucking 10? My, I'm, I'm kind of glad he's sitting away from the mic. My point is... It's like, keep moving away from the mic. My point you is... Where you back, in telic <laughs> go on, Jared, go on, Jared. My point <laughs> is getting back to, like, the government is spending money on stuff that doesn't Does, really need to be spent on... Where there's more, you mm. know, we do kind of waste a lot of money or we give a lot of money away to other countries like India or whatever, but we have to do shit That's like MOD. that. It's MOD and the MOD. To, yeah. Look mm. at what they did with Ajax. The thing is, the, the mm. British Army, apparently it's going to take 10 years to increase the, uh, the British Army to be actual. Um, Fighting, 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 fighting the cap capability. Ten think, years think, from now to get up to I even go this, to war. I think the, the, the Ukraine problem is probably give a kick up the arse to a lot of people in my yeah. to go actually this can happen at any point and start going back to, to that kind of, kind of warfare but, I think, yeah. but back to what you're saying like hopefully do you know what I mean it's uh, when before but, but, go on sorry. go back go back to what I was saying is so on like weapon trials and all that yeah I think I was like being I wasn't yeah, sure, no, you I were, wasn't yeah, sure yeah. if you guys yeah, 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 yeah. we had sniper we had trials for a sniper for a new sniper weapon. So we had the L ninety six, which is a seven six two like yeah. sniper rifle. Yeah. Oh, actually, when we, when we first came to snipers, seven that was what yeah, we used. Right. So Just, and both both weapons. Yeah, so the trials to re to produce what we ended up with the AI, right? Mm -hmm. The the uh, the three three eight. The um, oh, yeah, that's what we actually used international. Our, that, that's what we used in our sniper course, Joe, wasn't it? Use both, didn't we? Because go, go. it's a British made. That's right. Come on, Hugh, what's your yeah. point? Continue on what I was saying. The sniper trial, the, the trials for that weapon were done by two power. And the trials for that weapon, the results of that trial, shock horror, were not the AI. No, Timberwolf. The winning, the winning weapon, as Jared said, it's was that, a, a, a Canadian, a, a Canadian yeah. weapon called Timberwolf, which not only, what, cause not only won, but, but won in terms of like, uh, what it needed to do for people on the ground. And he said operators then. Mm. Not operators. But for people on the ground, was head and shoulders above all of the other weapon systems that have been tried including the AI the AI got chosen because it was British even though it was, it was substandard mm. for compared to the rest right it was still above what the L96 was required to do but it was chosen because it was British now when you look at it from a right. when you look at a practical British. yeah yeah good weapon yeah. system when you look at a practical I, point I would still have that L96 over any Fucking right. I think hey. like what you're saying there, Hughes. It, it, <coughs> that all comes down. It just comes down to politics in the end, doesn't it? And it comes. Uh, no, there's a I, benefit to choosing the British weapon system. Yeah, it, it injects money and back into the. Yeah, it injects yeah. money back into you. Mm -hmm. It's a British uh, uh, contractor which is going to employ potentially British people. I mean, we weren't choosing a shite weapon no. system. No, and there'll be, there'll be, there'll be people good. that are, are above that be that be paying money into the into the government system to be like we're having this contract, like so. And they'll have their the hands in pockets. They'll have they'll have this. Oh, people they'll benefited. Be, I have they'll no They'll speak into those people's yeah, yeah, ears yeah. to say like, yeah. "We want this contract." And and it's, like you said, it's not a bad weapon system, was it? But I've I've never I used a Timberwolf either, so I have no idea. No, I didn't. Yeah. No. Um, Ukraine. Go on, Gnarred. Oh, Jarrah's yeah. fingers on Go Ukraine. On, right, hang on a minute. Steve is sitting there. That's fine. And he's agitated. <laughs> and he's agitated. No, go on, man. Do you speak, want to do this? Speak. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Go for speak. it. 
That's all I've got to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right. Speak, Jared. Sp- say your say your piece. Say your piece. Nothing really. I have been watching a lot. I think I keep up. In fact, Jen's well, sick to death of me watching stuff on Ukraine. I reckon, now you know how I by, felt through the by, pandemic. By the end of the uh, this war, I will be <coughs> fluent in Ukraine because <laughs> <laughs> all the videos I watch are something. It's it's not in English. So so you've you, you done it. You've done it. Everything you got to Ukraine. I'll, I'll be honest. I I haven't been paying it too much of an interest for whatever reason. You but should be. I, you I, should I, be. I know I should be doing a lot of things, but I've got more yeah. pressing things at the moment. But um, go on, tell me. Um, what what have you from what you've been watching? What have you been witnessing? And what's been what's what's the crack? Well, um, basically, Wagner Group and the Russian army about basically got a bit of a rift because the Russians aren't have got to a point now they they've not got the ammo and shit to supply Wagner Group that need it. Who are just like cannon fodder. So, uh, Wagner Group, this independent mercenary force. Mercenary force. But yeah. they've, they've lost so many it's men. It's Russian they've, military outsourcing again. Yeah, they've, they've lost so many people. Like a Blackwater of the Americans. Yeah, like a, like, but not, not but, highly trained. They, yeah, yeah. They've but more, to, more closely, they're basically a, a government. government. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. they are basically, they're, what they do majority at the moment is recruiting people from Question like. Is, why um, does it matter? From the prisons. And okay. Just, so if you got like I was watching this video the other day, he had um, he was in prison for six years or something. He did half his sentence. They come to his prison, said, "Look, if you serve six months over in Iraq, uh, Iraq, sorry, Ukraine, you're done. Six month contract. If you're you're done that. You survive it. You get paid such an amount each each month. And, you're free. and then yeah, if you get if you get injured, you have a bit of a play out. If you get if you actually get Basically, killed, give me six months and you, yeah. you you're free." Yeah, but six months you're free if you like if you survive. They didn't, yeah. But then they're getting sent to uh, Ukraine. <laughs> they've got no ammo because the Russian uh, Russians haven't got haven't got the um, logistics in place to keep supplying them. They've got no nothing, so they get in there. They just cannon fodder. The Russian artillery will just bombard the hell out of Ukraine and then just send wave and wave of these mercenaries over who are just getting shot down by the crew. They've got the numbers. But they haven't how, got the heart to fight, obviously. Mm-hmm. How much do you? How much have you heard about? You can laugh because you know. I love it. You how, just derail it every How topic. much have you heard of BlackRock? A company called BlackRock. Nothing. You've never heard anything about nothing. It. Okay, so BlackRock is a company, an, an American. You keep on flying back. I'm going to do a huge job. You keep on going back off. I do. Thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a venture capitalist. Is that would you? Is that how you're describing BlackRock? Yeah, BlackRock are the ones that went down they, they, years ago. Venture no, capitalists have ben, in BlackRock have never gone down. No, no, no. BlackRock have got, and I'm not making this up. That's okay. Black, BlackRock have got the contract to rebuild Ukraine. It's not even over. Yeah, the war's well, not over yet. Yeah, mm. that's not okay. abnormal. No, no, okay, but somebody knows the fucking war's over, don't they? So they've, they've been awarded. Hang on, they've been awarded this co- contract to rebuild Ukraine. Now BlackRock own have been known to buy in affordable homes all over the US. Yeah, they did. The, okay. okay. They're, so they're buying a lot of affordable homes over the UK, obviously over the US. But now they they want to build, and the WEF released a video of this of BlackRock buying Ukraine and rebuilding Ukraine as a smart city, as in no cashless. Business savvy, uh, like a business, like basically the Bahamas. This was done early on in the crisis, in the in the war, very early. And on. they are going to turn yeah. Ukraine as in as a, an, ad, an idea was put out. No, no, the deal was done. The deal was very done. early on, in exchange for investment from BlackRock, not directly into Ukraine. Ukraine's done this deal via via uh, Zelensky. Okay, yeah. So they're taking investment from large corporations to basically rebuild. Ukraine before it's even been taken. Well, that's up. not. I don't. I don't see that's the bad thing. No. So what if no, I used to? No, but when you find out to, who's investing in it, if I that's used to when you start raising your eyebrows. If I used to high level this right, so what can easily be done is you look at a you can look at a you can look at a situation like Ukraine and Russia, and you go, and like the situation is now, what Steve is talking about, and all these fucking nefarious dealers got in the back door, and you go, oh, mm. and you can go right back and say, oh. Well, maybe the situation was uh, created and manufactured in order to create this, which I don't think is the case, no. right? It's not, what it's is not the case? I don't what is the that. case? What is the case? Is that um, as happened with Iraq, as happened with Libya, as oh, happened with it's, Afghanistan? It's an opportunity. The, the, the thinking about the the, think, the thinking about whether failed in the past of how we can make it. Yeah, it's an yeah. no, no. So, so, so even higher level than that, yeah. right? What happens is, a situation happens, comes about, and that situation may be brought about 
for nefarious reasons, like the Iraq War was, for like ex- not Gulf One, Gulf Two, ex- exactly brought around for nefarious reasons. But when that happens, that presents an opportunity for all of these other, yeah. like from money laundering to money creating to all these other schemes, where all of these fucking horrible capitalist entities. I'm not saying capitalism is bad. I'm saying entities that exist because of capitalism that are bad to exploit. So what you've got is you've got the Ukraine-Russia situation, which is bad. Like, Russia shouldn't have invaded Ukraine. I don't believe Russia should be in there. Like, I, it's not a good situation for, for people who are there. Like, Ukraine is not a good situation. But what has happened now is the waters are so muddied by everyone jumping in to make money. Of course. One of the things it does is it draws out... It makes longer the uh, the crisis that's going on. It makes the war longer. This could potentially be resolved six, twelve months ago. Uh-huh. Potentially could have been resolved that long ago, if all of these other entities hadn't come in. And that is all down to and people hear the military industrial complex. That is what the military industrial complex is. So if you think about what the opportunities for the war. Uh, like a war presents. Of course it does, yeah. If you appeal it, then if you go on to, let's say Ukraine finishes now, what all those entities who make money from, they know how to make monies from these situations. Mm-hmm. That Ukraine ends now, they're then looking how to engineer the next yeah. one. And they aren't doing that overtly. They're doing that through lobbying. They're doing that through, oh, let's look at the next big country with oil reserves or or um, uh, or geopolitical power. power if we owned it. They're looking how then to engineer a crisis politically, yeah. which is probably how Ukraine <coughs> and Russia came about. Anyone that challenges the American petrol dollar. Do you want to get into that? No, but we Good, because I can't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, the American pe- sorry, the American petrol dollar. Anybody. You are. I, anybody, I know a little bit about anybody it. Anybody. That's challenging yeah. the Mexican petrol dollar. Yeah, so, you're going to say like Libya and... Well, Libya. Well, could, but you don't even have to... That's not even a conspiracy. Because no, 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 Gadda- no, no, Gaddafi... Yeah, August. no one says it's a conspiracy. No, but I'm conspiracy Steve. Okay. So Gaddafi was subtitled. <laughs> subtitled. No, yeah. I call him that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's what some I, of the patrons. I'm not sure. What, I'm Steve, not sure what conspiracy yeah. Steve is in Welsh, but it'll be in in quote. And, uh, I can't believe you just call yourself it. I'm conspiracy <laughs> Steve. I thought sure it's a good title, mate. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so we got different. We got different aspects of different time zones of where the Americans have invaded different places. So we've got. People don't know don't know a lot about Saddam Hussein. So Saddam Hussein actually, three months <coughs> three months before the invasion of Iraq, mm-hmm. he said, "I will not deal anymore in this war currency. I am going to change the Iraqi petrol dollar, if you mm-hmm. like, to I will exchange it in euro." Yeah, and it cost the Americans um, over three billion dollars. And then after three months, they invaded. Took the the America's not going to invade over three billion dollars. Three billion dollars is like a fucking penny to me and you. Okay, no, well, it was uh, and the rest. It was it was a cumulative. It was more than that. It was more than that. Was a that was a, a statement that was issued out. That wasn't because if, if Libya if Libya did it, it would cause a chain reaction. No, I know. Then, in the same then, way yeah, that the yeah. EU was so opposed then, to Britain then, leaving, and hmm. then shortly after, all of a sudden, when it was conquered, if you like, or when it, they had um, control of the country. Um, they switched it back to American dollar. They didn't sit in the This isn't something new, by the way. No, no. And it must have been. It must have but been. I, but nobody knew this, did they? I don't nobody I mean, must I have been, I didn't fucking It must know. have been easier back in the day, right? This isn't. So, this kind of stuff isn't new. Let's go and exploit another weaker country mm. because we can gain something from it. Back in the day, in the, like the height of the British Empire, we must have done this. Of course. And all the all we'd have to do is the Prime Minister and the King or the Queen at the time. It would, because most people, well, there was no internet, there was nothing. Yeah, so if you come, in, what you would told. communicate. You would communicate the problems in, I don't know, Kenya, and you say, oh, we should go in here, and then you you persuade people quite easily. Then you just send an army. Well, that's and how the world works. Yeah, but it, 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 just fewer people benefit. It's, it's yeah. not. It's not based on lies. It's based on genocide. The world wars. I'm not smoke the world wars. Yeah, yeah. The world wars. No, I said. I said that's how the world works. Oh, I thought it was the world wars. No, no, that's how the world works. That's how the world's always worked. Mm. I don't think that's a huge conspiracy. You know? What do you think the outcome of Ukraine is going to be, Jared? I think exactly uh, we should start wrapping this up. Yeah, okay, okay. Blackrock are going to come in and fucking turn the place into a, uh, into a smart city. What do you think the outcome of Ukraine is going to be, Jared? I think um, Russia will... Bear in mind, we're talking to a man who <laughs> has been accused of being a paedophile. And I no, he help. hasn't been accused of being a fucking paedophile. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm accusing him as... <laughs> I think uh, Russia will 
keep hold of some land. They won't get it back. They'll keep think, hold of some, yeah. Yeah, I think we're 50-50. Do you think, do you think it'll yeah. come down to that that degree of... Yeah, just, um, they'll keep hold of something just to save face. To say, and that'll be allowed. Either that yeah. or Putin will, like... Um, He's getting China and that involved, mm. but I think Putin will try and provoke the uh, West into a third yeah, world war. Yeah, the majority. Ma- yeah, the majority. The majority. I think that's what his only way out is to try is. and provoke a third world <clears throat> war, or save face. To save face, or do you think? Do you think? Do you think the? I know you want to wrap it up, mate. And, but um, do Nord, you? Do you Nord think? I, I like, and I generally mean this. I don't. I don't know enough about it. But do you think? Um, that would be something the Ukraine would eventually be talked into. Like, look, just allow him to keep. So he's got Crimea from 2014 It'll and the Donbass region. Donbass region. Do you think they'll be like, let him I, have that and no. then we can deal with this later on in, no. in I, time? I think they will, yeah. No. Okay. I think they'll settle on a... Um, on a, on a what's I, it you, have on to, a you have to remember, right, at the start of the... At the, start of the Sorry, the, Jared, settle on what? On a... On a a front republic a, yeah a border between a like you say you have to remember the the donas region a lot of people in that region Don, they, they are, russian. Don, are, russian. Are, are russian russian sympathized they are, yeah. they want to be russian you, you, you got half an hour it's, it's a bit of a shit show you've really. also got to remember that at the start of the conflict right at the start when you talk about zelensky in ukraine they were not a people united behind. No, 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 yeah, 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 not at all. They yeah, were yeah, divided. The most yeah, yeah, yeah. They were divided nation. more than they were divided. The most corrupt nation <laughs> in on. the entire. And you can check no, every <laughs> every mainstream news <laughs> channel has fucking reported that Ukraine is the most corrupt nation in Europe for the past five years. And I doubt anybody to bring me an article that changes that fucking. You. I'm waiting for you, you to know go what's going to happen like, now in, my little, in the Discord server with my patrons I'm going to get chucked article after article after article <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go what is he taking <laughs> what is he taking I would, I would like to state though I am on, I would like to state I am pro Ukraine I would like to, 100%. I would like to state he will be home by 10 o'clock because he can't hold him hey mate Senator Senator stop Cleary I've um I've often not like, thought about going in, over to the region. Oh, here's a question then. If if we were all single mm-hmm. and yeah. we had no uh, we had no commitments back here, oh, no response. You, yeah, go. I, don't, I didn't even need to ask the question. No, no, yeah, I? yeah, yeah, for sure. And and to be and to be fair, when this first started, I think I spoke to you, Jared, at some yeah. point, didn't I? When um when it first remember when it first ever kicked off and it and it was like everyone was like fucking like what the fuck this could actually like all of us as many people school like, told you i was going i think no, I, 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 I think yeah, i spoke to you and like i was like i had to sit down with lucy and i was like look if this turns into something that could potentially be like kicking on the doors of europe then we're gonna have to think about the likes of us having to volunteer our service and go for for, for without a doubt i, I literally <laughs> if, had that if conversation I did, with yeah, my wife. if i did have responsibilities like i have now what responsibility I'd, you got well, a wife, a wife, a wife and, a, and a dog. Yeah. But if I didn't have that responsibilities, like only what, say four years ago, if I was, I was a different person, mm. four years ago, I'd have probably have gone yeah, out. Yeah, for, what, for what reason? For what reason? Just to do, just make money. Oh. No, not for money, obviously, because there's no money to be earned fighting no. in Ukraine. Just go and do the just the sharp be, end of the st- yeah. stick to, stuff. Yeah. To to lend a hand, basically, because uh-huh. I've had got the experience exactly. and the knowledge, so I'd class myself. As someone who could uh, benefit Definitely. benefit them yeah, yeah, yeah. and assist them, yeah. and not I'd be a hindrance on them. You're a <laughs> former elite soldier, Jared. Exactly. That's not paint under the fucking. Yeah, thank you. And I, I agree. I like uh, the same. I, I, I did it for free. Yeah. Well, well, you've just yeah, done it to you go guys, through. You'd be basically doing it for free. <laughs> Jared, do it for free. You'd be oh, basically do doing it for free. Would you have done it for free, Jared? Would you have done it for free, Jared? I'd say you'd be basically doing it for free. Yeah. Would you do it for free? The money's not. The money's nothing. I'd be doing it for the for the right thing I to do. I would do it for free. Yeah. So I, yeah, and I, agree. I wouldn't be doing it to make money. That's I agree. for sure. I agree. Like I said, I literally sat down with my wife and we had that conversation. Remember when it first happened? Yeah. It was like yeah, this yeah. could turn. Yeah. Oh, I had that. I actually had that conversation. It was like this could turn into something serious. And but I've got responsibilities, of course. And and if and if it turned into how are your chickens? It's a bit of a tough subject. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Ukraine and fighting. Yeah, yeah. I've How are you chickens? I can't talk about that. I've actually, <laughs> I've actually lost a chicken. Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. So, the fox so the key. just quickly to wrap it up. <laughs> just no, quickly wait. to wrap it up. <laughs> Hang on. Go on. So I spent, I spent £80 on, a, <laughs> on an automatic. That was, that was a traumatic incident. Go on, yeah, on yeah, an yeah. automatic yeah. fucking chicken door. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, it work, it's light sensitive. It opens, you know, like a 
uh, and light, you know, goes, oh, oh, yeah, right. So it's light sensitive. So in the morning, it opens. But you, yeah, so but you can change it to time openings as right. well and because it's winter I changed it to times because obviously it's quite dark through yeah. the yeah, winter yeah, days yeah, yeah, yeah. so the door weren't Very open clever. so I changed it to, to time now um, obviously as <laughs> as the seasons are changing it gets lighter in the evening Yeah, the door I hadn't changed the time because I thought they'd all be up in bed and all the through and the M1 um, Blackie <laughs> the door closed <laughs> But it was still a bit. And the other three had gone up to roost. Why did Blackie, you decide the Blackie name? That's sophisticated. Because she's black. <laughs> I so, hear, I hear that Blackie on. was the front one. So, so, um, so Blackie, bless her, <laughs> still outside. Yeah. Did she get out? No, I check when the door came down. Well, I, so her. I check on them every night anyway. But this night I was out having some work done on my van. So I didn't go and check oh, on them because I was away. The door had closed. Blackie was still outside. She was on the wrong side. <laughs> wrong side of the wire. Wrong side of the wire. And the fox coming to her. <laughs> so at first it was a bit of a mystery. I thought, where is she? She just vanished. Nothing. Later was on there, that, there was no later signs that, of any feathers or nothing. No. Later <laughs> on that day, I went and looked in the field at the top of the house and there was two lots of feathers. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah, they were the black, confirmed black feathers. To, confirmed to be blackies. <laughs> It, have, you, have, it, you, have you had an outside investigation? Oh, no, so it's your fault. No, on a serious note. So poor honest, Blackie went to get back in, the door came down, and then uh, turned around Mr. Fox. You, <laughs> honestly, you knocked her out. On a serious note. And you want to go on, on out? A, on a serious note, <coughs> it, was, it weren't all that bad because it was closure, you know? The boy, to find the feathers. Find so feathers, Blackie yeah, was terminally yeah. ill? No. No. She's terminally dead. What She's terminal. You? For, he, said, he said that she, it was... Um, closure. Yeah. It was closure he, he on the, the mystery. You found the body. Well, I didn't find <laughs> the body. No, just just well, that's my next point. Just the feathers. The body was gone, mate, because it had been eaten. Just the feathers, two piles, where Fox first initial... Then later... <laughs> I bet when the police... Did the police turn up and say, do you own a canal boat? <laughs> So what's happened? How old was I, the I, chicken? I guess you've changed your electric... How old was that? When was that when we, where was your last borough? Change the settings. So Where how were you in the last six months? How many chickens have how you got now? How many chickens have you got in the last six months? Three left. Three left. Three left. I might replace Blackie with another one. Are, well. To be fair, they are fantastic animals. Chickens? Fuck off, Mate. Steve. Steve's has chickens. No, they, chickens. I've they're chicken. awesome pets. Mate, they've had chickens, I've pets. had ducks. You have a cafe. Each one's got a character. Wait. Can you imagine wait, me? Wait, wait, wait. Can wait. you imagine me? Jesus. Jesus. Can you imagine me and Steve's Christ. pet? Can you imagine me and Steve's pet? Yeah. What loved. Imagine that. Such loved and looked after. <laughs> Not like <laughs> your... Oh, let it do me. You start on your fucking dog. Episode what what happened to your dog? What happened to your dog? It couldn't stand you that much. It jumped out the fucking window. Didn't I think it? my microphone's gone. Uh, what on earth is he talking about? Dave, the dog. Yeah, no, you're right. Give me a Go on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, go on. Yeah, what happened Jumped to it? out of a window. It jumped out of a window. When's the last chicken jumped out my window? They can fly, Steve. Yeah, but when's the last dog that jumped out my window? Can not, my, fly? not my chickens, because I've cut their wings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Trim their wing, fly, fly that's feathers. That's correct, that's correct. Exactly. So, so they can't correct. get any so air to take off. Wait, right. shut up. We're wrapping it up. Fucking no, no, we're stupid. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I would just like to say... No. Uh, I know we were talking about health. And everyone's looking around drinking him and smoking cigars and having <laughs> beer. I got but we are generally quite healthy. I'm not. And I love every single person here. I love Hugh. I love Luke more than anyone. <laughs> I, I love Luke. Luke's my boy. Uh, and I love Jared. So, yeah. If anyone else would like to say anything. Yeah. I can stay with him. No, it's been a pleasure to see you all. It has been. For, no. uh, Support Ukraine. Are you sabotaged ever to 200 less than 100? I appreciate that. Okay, good. that's no problem. No, I'll pay the damages if you want. No, it's fine. Good. So and um, let's go and get drunk, boys. Yeah. Sorry. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for watching the H Hour podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast and you haven't already done so, please subscribe here around about there. I'm hoping it's around about there where the button's going to appear. If not, if it's not already appeared, uh, you can also, um, if you want to listen to the podcast on your commute for example when you're driving when it's not practical to watch the podcast you can listen to it it's on spotify it's on apple podcasts it's on google podcasts it's everywhere it's on all of the uh, all of the common and not so common podcast apps you can also if you wish to do it become a patron of h hour becoming a patron of h hour you get access to all of the interviews before anyone else so this interview with this guest was released days if not weeks before it was on release to the general public and you also get access to uh, 
exclusive interviews, which I do with each guest, that last about five, ten minutes, that are based on questions that the patrons themselves of H Hour have chosen. And each guest, this one included, gets asked those questions before the main podcast starts getting recorded. It's like a pre-podcast interview, lasts about ten minutes. And those interviews are really insightful, really enjoyable, nice and short, and they only release to patrons. They never, they never get released to the public. I don't know why I had a little stutter there. Um, you also get access to a Discord community, exclusive Discord community only for patrons. You also get invited to a monthly Zoom call with myself and all the other patrons. And very often, most months, we have a previous podcast guest comes onto that Zoom call and has an exclusive Q&A with the patrons. In addition to this, there's monthly giveaways. We give away, give away gifts to my patron supporters. And it's all like, well, predominantly veteran-owned stuff. I'll go and buy veteran-owned apparel, veteran-owned product services, and I'll give them away to my patron supporters. And I'll also uh, do exclusive invites for events. So you'll get freebie tickets to events. To become a patron of Hey Hour, go to patreon.com forward slash HK podcast. I'm spelling Patreon, P A T R E O N, patreon.com forward slash HK podcasts. Hit become a patron. And uh, I'll see you on the next Zoom, Q- Zoom QA if you do. Oh, you also get your name in the credits. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.